Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and uh, I'm the author of 55 self-published books on Amazon. Uh, I've got 2,500 videos on YouTube. I've written 85 articles. Um, I'm a teacher of the Word of God and a prophet, and uh, I uh, welcome you to this video. This is uh, a video that uh, may be disturbing for some and uh, quite a surprise to people. Uh, but the, this is the truth, and uh, and uh, and it's a good thing to bring forth truth when you're teaching the Word of God. So let's have a look at uh, this parable. It's called the parable of the dinner guest, and uh, and please be sure that I'm teaching on the 54 parables of Jesus, and you can find the whole 54 of them over the next few weeks uh, by the end of August 2020. Uh, on a playlist on my YouTube channel. So I encourage you to subscribe or go to that playlist and watch the parables that I've been preaching. Uh, let's have a look at uh, our parable text and uh, go through it. And then he said to them, Jesus said to them, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and he sent his servant at supper time uh, to say to those who are invited, come for things are now ready but they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask to you to have me excused. Still another said, I've married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go quickly out to the streets of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the lamed and the blind. And the servant said, master, it is done as you commanded and, there, and still there is room. Then the master said, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Okay, so we're going to um, uh, we, we're going to say something pretty scary here, right? Uh, and uh, this may concern you, but Jesus said it first. Okay, uh, verse twenty-four. For I say to you that none of those men who are invited shall taste my supper. Do you know that to be a disciple of Jesus, you've got to uh, do what Jesus taught. And uh, to be a friend of Jesus, uh, you've actually got to be a disciple for a while. So Jesus said in Matthew 15, after uh, between uh, the, good, the, the Last Supper and when Jesus was uh, taken and arrested, He said to his disciples, who'd been with him for three and a half years and left everything for him, he said to them, um, now I call you friends. But he called them friends after three and a half years of living the whole life for him. So um, if a certain man was sending um, out invitations uh, to a supper, um, to a great feast, he'd send his invitations to his friends. He, he wouldn't send it to strangers. And um, you may consider yourself a friend of God, uh, but if you're not obeying Jesus, you're not. But uh, let's just say Jesus has sent you an invitation uh, to... <laughs> The wedding supper of the Lamb, and let's let's make no mistake. This this is the wedding supper of the Lamb. This this is the rapture we're looking at. We're, we're looking at going home uh, to have dinner with our Lord and Savior. And um, listen to what happened with the friends. On one accord, they all made excuses. Jesus has said quite clearly. Uh, that um, uh, be, be, beware of covetousness, 
that our life does not consist of the abundance of your possessions. Jesus warned very clearly that you can't serve mammon, you can't serve the world and himself. Uh, he said uh, no one can serve two masters, either he'll love one and despise the other or love the second and despise the other one. Um, therefore, you cannot serve uh, uh, God and mammon. Jesus also said uh, that uh, don't store your riches on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in the steel, but store your treasure in heaven. So the modern Christian tries to serve the world, tries to serve mammon and Jesus at the same time. They uh, invest all of their money in the things of the world and the lust of the flesh and build up treasure on earth. And they don't choose to serve Jesus or obey Jesus. Um, so if they've got excuses, they, uh, if you ask most Christians, they don't want to go home to see Jesus. They want to live on earth. It's only because things are getting difficult on earth that people want to go. So um, verse 24 says very clearly, for I say to you that none of those men who are invited shall taste my supper. Jesus is saying a lot of the church aren't going to make it to heaven. They're simply not going to make it because they've made their excuses. They're busy living life in the world and they're not uh, putting Jesus first. James 4, 4 says, adulteresses and adulterers, don't you know that friendship with the world is making yourself an enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to become a friend of the world uh, becomes an enemy of God. So when is God going to take his enemies to heaven with him? So we've covered that, that there's a good chance if you live the normal Christian life that you're not going to see heaven. And you've made your decision to live in the world and not to serve Jesus and not to come to his party and not to live like he said. And you've got all your reasons. One of them uh, bought a, a new property, a piece of ground. One of them brought five yoke of oxen, like uh, bought a new business. That's like a, a new business because oxen used to plow the ground. So it's like someone bought a business and someone said, I just married a wife. Uh, you'll remember uh, that Jesus said the second coming of uh, as the Son of Man will be like Noah. Uh, you know, people were eating and drinking and giving in marriage right until the flood came and they were taken by surprise. People are just living their life, starting businesses, uh, marrying people, um, buying assets, um, and uh, they're too busy uh, to. Uh, to lay down their life and live for God. And I've made an excuse which God they want to serve. They want to serve mammon. And uh, because of their behavior, that they haven't got uh, an official uh, invitation of Jesus. Jesus hasn't sent out an invitation. Uh, do you want to come uh, to heaven? Uh, I'm coming uh, to, to get my bride now. Uh, he did send a servant out, but they're not listening. You can, you can consider me as a servant inviting you to the supper. And most Christians, I'm sad to say, aren't qualified. And uh, then um, I'm not saying that Christians are necessarily bad, but they're, they're just serving another God and they're proving that they're not interested in the God of heaven. And the servant came and reported these things to the master, and I'm reporting uh, the Christian church to the master right now. Then the master said, became angry. He's angry. You'd imagine Jesus being angry. Remember, he got angry uh, in the temple uh, because they were, uh, they, they were exchanging money and making money out of the sacrifices. Well, that's what the church does, the, the Christian church. Uh, have have made Christianity just a money-making scheme. And uh, Jesus was angry then, he's angry now. He's angry because the people who say that they love him, they say that they're his friends, 
um, don't want anything to do with them and improving through their lifestyle, but they're too busy for God. And um, so the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed, the lame and the blind. So all the broken hearted people, uh, Jesus said, go and get the lame, people who can't walk, people who are poor, people who are maimed, people who are blind. Just go and get all the society rejects and uh, bring them uh, into my house. So the guy went and gathered as many strangers. These aren't friends. These aren't Christians. These aren't uh, friends of, of the master. These are strangers. Go out and uh, get all those people. And uh, he did uh, as he was commanded, and there's still room. And so uh, Jesus, uh, the master, is saying, well, go out into the highways and the hedges and the highways and the byways where people are on laying on the highway and homeless people and hedges uh, and uh, people sleep under hedges uh, for protection. Um, go and get all the derelicts and, and all the broken-hearted people and the truly poor and compel them to come in, say, hey, you know, the Christian church doesn't want anything to do with Jesus, uh, but... Um, you're welcome uh, to come in and be part of the body of Christ. Uh, so come in. So we've now entering into this stage on earth right now. Right now, um, right now, we're reaching a stage where uh, Jesus is going to turn on the church and give up on the church and he's going to uh, collect his bride and uh, he's going to collect a new form of people and he's going to start... Um, outpourings and, and reaching the brokenhearted and the lost and truly the sinners and, and, and the people who, um, who, who are living lives of sin, the desperate, the brokenhearted, the hurting, he's going to go out and get all those people. And uh, he's looking for servants. He's, he's got a servant in the house and we're meant to be servants of Christ. So we could represent the servants of the master's house um, or we could represent uh, the friends of the master who made our excuses. And uh, this parable is meant to be convicting. You, you, need, to, you need to choose this day. Don't, don't leave it another day. You need to choose this day how you're going to serve Jesus. And uh, you need to um, firstly maybe um, watch the whole uh, playlist of these parables and perhaps uh, by the book that uh, comes from this. Uh, uh, one step would be uh, to join my YouTube channel and uh, watch my videos and listen to some good teaching. Um, and uh, so this is the parable. Things are dire and, uh, and you need to um, turn your life around. And I, I would uh, encourage you to uh, cry out to Jesus right now and say, that you don't want to be left behind because verse 24 says very clearly that none of you are going to make it. And uh, it's a scary parable. And, uh, and as far as uh, church teachers are concerned, they don't teach this parable like it's meant to be taught. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, press like, uh, if uh, thumbs up, if, if you don't like this video, press thumbs down. Um, I'd encourage you to comment. I encourage you to join my channel and follow my videos. God bless.